Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I do, um, my name is Mariam Hanif and I do like baby videos. Um, I've got a little baby boy called Yahya who is 15 months old and I do kind of like, I've started to do lifestyle Islamic videos. Um, so do click subscribe and you can see more of me. I kind of do them, I try and do them every two weeks but life sometimes gets a bit too much. So today's video is um, tips and tricks for Umrah. I have been to Mecca about three times now, so we went to Umrah twice and then we did Hajj as well. So I kind of know, well if I was to go again I know what I'm going to do um, and I know what I'm going to pack and I know what I'm going to take with me and where to go and what to do. So I thought let me share that with you guys. So if you are going, congratulations, it's so exciting and I can't wait to go again. So I've kind of split it up into three sections, so like before you go, while you're doing Umrah and just like Mecca and Medina bits. So, before you go, um, please, please, please do pack a spare ihram in your hand luggage. The amount of times luggage goes missing in Saudi Arabia is crazy. Um, we've been three times and two times that we went, we've had luggage missing. I would also suggest to put your prayer books in your hand luggage as well, just in case your luggage does go missing and you can't get it back before you do Umrah. Um, if you spent so much time on those books, you want to be able to read them while you're there. A month before you go, you do need to start to top up um, your vitamin C intake. Um, you really do need to build up your immune system because there are so many people there um, and it's so easy to get a cold. It's called the Hajji cough. Um, it's so easy to get ill and also when you come back, you get ill. So you really, really, really want to make sure that your immune system is top notch and up to scratch, start having orange juice in the morning, start having vitamin C tablets every day. Um, we did it about a month before. I would also suggest to start walking at least 20 minutes a day. Um, if you're not an avid walker, then definitely, definitely do this because you will be walking loads while you're in Mecca and Medina, especially if you're going on ziaras. Um, and during Umrah, it's something like 30,000 steps or something. So you do want to make sure that you kind of get into the habit of walking. Do you take a copy of all your documents? So when we went, I took a copy of our passports, visas, um, I took a photo co photo ID copy, as well as our hotel and our transfer copies. Just because, um, God forbid anything happens, you have those copies with you and you can prove your identity, prove your, where you're staying. Um, yeah. I would also say to get those name tags that you have around your neck, so if you're going in a group, um, with a company they'll probably provide you with them but if they don't i would highly recommend to get one just in case again god forbid anything happens you've got a name tag around your neck with your id your picture your name your address emergency contact number um so somebody can get a hold of you or if you're lost if you've got an elderly person or a child extremely important so in mecca there are so many janaza prayers so after every single namaz mainly there's always a janazah prayer so i would definitely recommend to try and memorize the janazah prayer the three times that i've been because for women obviously we don't do janazah prayers here in well in the uk we don't tend to go um but in saudi arabia that you women can pray as well because it's all open um however i was i just for the life of me couldn't memorize the prayer so i took the muslim pro app on my phone downloaded the app and um, I basically read it off the phone while I was reading the Janazah prayer and inshallah that will be accepted but I would recommend to memorize that before you go. Just try and learn some basic Arabic as well. It's just kind of like, hi, how are you? Where is this? Like calm down, like you do need to tell people to have patience sometimes because they'll be pushing and shoving and that's a test as well in itself. So just make sure you kind of like control yourself and control your nafs into not getting angry and aggressive towards them you just need to sort of say you know what calm down i would highly recommend to get familiar with the hajj and umrah made easy books i showed them in my uh, what's pack for umrah video and that is so important because it will show you where everything is it will show you where the garba is how to get to safa marva how to exit um where the yemeni corner is where the blackstone is it's so crucial to find out where those places are so that you can just focus when you're there um so prayer book this is one of my prayer books i literally had um this big one and two of those you know those small little books um, so I had two of those small little books and this big one and it's so important to be able to organize it properly um, I just found writing down your prayers is 
crucial because when you're writing them down you think about them more you think about other things that come with it when you're there and you're praying things just come off the top of your head i had one book for my dwarf actually so the seven times you go around i had a book for that i had a book for uh safa Merva, and i had a book for just general prayers this is actually my book that i did for hajj um i wrote on there as a well, hajj book <laughs> but I would definitely try and plan your Umrah time. You do want to do it after Maghrib and before Fajr. Um, your Umrah can take from two to six to eight hours. Like It can take its time. It depends how busy it is. Uh, it depends what time of the year you go. Um, you don't want to do it in the heat. You definitely don't want to do your Umrah in the heat. It will be too hot. You will need to be keep on refueling with water. You don't want to be going to the bathroom all the time. You really want to try and get it done within the say two hour period and do go and watch my what's pack for umrah video before you go to umrah so that you know what to take okay so during your umrah i would definitely suggest to pack really light take your backpack just have a water bottle in there have your prayer books have your prayer mat that you will need i would suggest to take a small um first aid bag just in case something happens while you're there um, a shoe bag for your shoes some snacks and some energy um, tablets just in case somebody in your group um, loses a lot of energy while they're there um, and another tip is actually if you do need to do wuzu again instead of going back to the hotel etc i would suggest to take a normal plastic water bottle i don't have one with me but poke some holes in the top and what you could do is just have water in there so that if you needed to do your wudu again you could just do it on the side Look. okay so the black stone in the yemeni corner um the black stone is so hard to get to because it will be so but like there'll be so many men that will be there so it's highly unlikely that women will be able to touch the black stone if you do amazing um with me i never did the three times that i went simply for the fact that i didn't feel comfortable pushing and shoving everyone to get to the black stone it's not a um fur that you have to do to complete your umrah obviously there's the um the hands up hand up that you have to do and the prayer um but it's not vital to go and touch the black stone the yemeni corner is much easier to do so if you just walk around and then slowly make your way in to towards the gaba um, it will be quite easy to touch the yemeni corner but definitely definitely please do not try and push and shove people um it's not ideal and you don't want to sort of do it while you're doing umrah um, at another time if it's quieter and there's not many people out then definitely do go and try and see if you can do it it's obviously there's some blessing in it um and with the hadim which is the semicircle besides the gaba i would definitely suggest to try and pray in there because if you pray in the first two rows um it's as if you're praying within the gaba so for the people that pray and near the end i don't it doesn't really count if you pr pray just in the first two rows that counts so just make sure you try and do that do be careful because you won't be able to go down into sajda um, because there's so many people so do try and do your sajda with you know awareness of how many people are around you so while you're doing your umrah try and hold on to each other's shoulder in a line so that you don't lose each other and that you can just hold somebody's shoulder and hold your prayer book in the other hand and focus on your dua um, it's easier to stay together that way as well as having a colorful umbrella so we had um my sister-in-law who had this really funny uh baby umbrella which was you know what baby umbrellas are like they're so colorful um so it was like green and pink and everything so she had that and we saw her for miles so uh, we didn't get lost so it's really helpful to have that and definitely definitely have a spot that if somebody does get lost once they finish their door off they can go there and meet you there and then for example if you're doing Safa Merva and you lose each other again get them to finish Safa Merva on their own and then find a spot that you can meet once you've finished um really important just in case you kind of lose each other and you just get a bit disorientated as to where you are make sure everybody in the group knows where to go there is a really cool wheelchair ramp um if you go into the King Fahad gate um and you go up the stairs so instead of going straight inside the King Fahad gate there's some stairs on either side if you go up the stairs onto the first floor you can go straight out into the Dawaf area um, on the first floor however 
Before you go out, on the left-hand side, there'll be a white ramp that will take you up to the wheelchair access. That is such an empty space. Um, so if you have children, or elderly people, it's the perfect place to go. Um, do not try and take them into the main Dwarf area. It is so, if it's so busy, you don't want to be trampled on, you don't want kids to fall over. It will just ruin the experience for you. And you can see the Gaba with clear view. There's nothing obstructing it. It's such a lovely place to be. We tended to go up there when it was really busy in the library or in uh, in the Gaba. We just went there and prayed and sat there and read our books and Quran. They don't tend to move you there and it's not very busy. There's probably just like one row of people. Um, so it was really, really nice to be there. Okay, so just some general tips. Um, don't forget to pack Imodium in your medical bag. Um, it's so difficult to find in um, Saudi Arabia. I think it's banned. I don't know if it still is, but when we went, it was. If you are thinking of doing another Umrah, um, then, the closest place is obviously Masjid the Aisha. And you can just get a taxi from outside that will take you there. It's not that expensive, but I would not get the taxis from the hotel. Um, also, do not eat from outside. I would only eat from the hotel or the food court. So where there's like a Hardee's or whatever it is. I don't know if there is McDonald's. I don't think there is, but KFC or whatever it is. Um, it is a lot of junk food. So if you can find some healthy alternatives, so they do do pastas and stuff there then do try not the pasta's healthy, but do try and get something um, good for the first few days as well, just so that you can make sure you do not get ill. That is the worst thing, and you don't wanna be ill while you're doing Umrah. Um, last time we went, my brother got ill, and it was the worst thing, so definitely try and not eat out. Try and take a spray fan, um, which is like a water sprayer with a fan that cools you down. Um, you can take one of those, or you can also take one of those Evian mist sprays. It's just water mist and it cools you down really nicely. They do do a really cool one in Lush that my sister-in-law's had. Um, I just had the Evian bottle or the spray fan. In Mecca and Medina, there are two different kinds of Qur'ans that are available. So there's a green one and a blue one. So one is the South African print, which is what a lot of Pakistanis and Indian people read. Um, and then the other one is the Arabic print. Change your money at the shopping malls. Don't change them at the hotel or don't change them at the airport when you're coming here or in your home country. You will always get a better rate at the shopping malls. Um, such a big difference the last time we went. So I would definitely suggest to do that. Um, I would also say to get a folding chair. So I had one with the backs. I showed that in my What's Back in Umrah video, but it was so, so helpful, especially when we were sitting up in that disabled ramp area. You could just sit there and pray as much as you wanted for as long as you wanted, because you had the back support and the seat support. You can get a free gift from the library. So if you go into Mecca um, and ask in the library, there'll be a little store on the left-hand side. Um, not a store, I think it's like a office. Um, you can ask them for your free gift. I think they only give them to men, but um, if you want one and you can give it to somebody else while you're there, but it's um, quite a nice thing to get. My mum got them for the boys. In Medina, you are only, the women are only allocated a specific time that they can go to the Roda. So that means that say after Fajr, they'll have a time from like seven till nine. You can go and give your salams um, and read your two nafil. However, what I found was, if it was say from two till uh, from seven till nine, I would always go at half past eight, so just half an hour before they closed, because all the rush is gone. Everybody that goes in, they have to sit down and they have to sit down for a good hour. Um, so once they've sat down and then they start getting the people to go through, half an hour before, it's just kind of like whoever comes in can just go straight in. Um, so that's a tip. However, if you do want to go earlier, it is also advised if you want to find out the history and where everything is, etc., because they will sit you down in your country. So if you are from Pakistan or India, from um, if you know Arabic, Asian um, kind of countries, they kind of sit you in specific places. Um, I always find that the Pakistanis and Indians go last. so. Um, we always try and sit with the Arabs because <laughs> they always go first. Um, but if you go to the far right, that's the group that will always go first. So they will go through the history with you in your own language so that you can understand and then they'll let you through. Um, so if you do go half an hour before, you will miss that. So if you do want to do that, then do go at the beginning. Just know that you'll be waiting for quite some time. When you do go to the Roda, loads of women go straight down to the corner to think that they can see 
the Holy Prophet Sallallahu grave. Women are unable to see that. The only thing that we see is the side, it's the side of Fatma Radiyadala Anu's house. The graves are way ahead in the men's section. The men can only see those. Um, and we are so far behind and you'll see so many women chucking their dubattas and trying to get some baraka from that. Um, God only knows. But what I think is the best thing to do is just to find your place in the green carpet. If you look down and once you've got a space at the green carpet, that's where you can read your two nuffal. Um, and obviously do your salams while you're there and do a dua if you can. Uh, it is really, really busy, but I would highly suggest to go straight in. People will always run to the corner. What you need to do is go near the exit. I know that sounds stupid, but near the exit, there is still lots of green carpet and it tends to be empty because people go in the corner. Um, if you are looking for hotels in Medina, do try and get one which is from gate number 13 to 30 because that is the women's entrance. Medina as well, if you do have children, um, you will have to sit at the back. So please don't get offended if they tell you to go, go, go. They're only telling you to sit right at the back of the mosque because obviously the children are loud and you'll hear babies screaming and crying and you don't want that to put off the men while they're praying either as well as the other women that are here on their own. Shopping, like I said, make sure you have your list of shopping to do, but I would do my majority of my shopping in Medina. It is cheaper, I find, um, and also just find one shop that does the majority of things. And just... This is my favorite tip because I hope that I get some benefit from it as well. <laughs> when you're at Umrah and Hajj, or Hajj, you want to be able to try and get as many like blessings as possible um one of the main things is to um sort of give to the poor so if you are uh, this is basically just give as much sadaqah as you can so one of the ways is to try and give lots of um cash out to really poor people that you see on the streets um or in the harem as well or if there's elderly people etc um you don't know how needy they are you don't know how much they want so it's really important to try and make sure that they that you can give basically. Number two is try and give a bit of money to the restaurants that are outside. Lots of restaurants there do give uh, poor people food, so people that don't have enough money to purchase food there. A lot of people that come from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, wherever it is, like these other areas, they are there for months because that's how their packages work. Um, so to sustain that kind of living is very difficult for these people and these um, shops tend to give out free food which is so helpful and may God bless them and give them as many rewards as possible but if you kind of give them cash it kind of it's quite nice for them to be able to give food to the poor people with your money inshallah you'll get the benefit for that as well um, another thing was trying to give prayer mats out so I just got those little five or ten rayal prayer mats the travel prayer mats um, for people that are outside this, you'll see them at the side of the clock tower, there'll be people with cardboard boxes like sitting on those and praying. Um, if you just hand the prayer mats out, it's they love it because they have something pure to sit on, they have something clean to sit on, of course they want that. So as many as you can, just try and hand those out and every time they pray on those, inshallah, inshallah, you will get the reward for that. Um, I would also say to say, take little snacks and chocolates while you're at the harem, it's quite nice to give out to the kids. Last time I went with Yakya, it was quite nice because there's so many children around, so we just kind of handed out chocolate or sweets while we were there and they loved it. Anyway, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching and inshallah this has been extremely helpful. Fingers crossed. Um, if there's any tips that you have when you went to Umrah, um, then do put them down in the comments so that other people can see them as well. Uh, really, really helpful to find out where you know certain things are or what you can do while you're there. Anyway, the lighting's going really bad in this room, so it's the sun. Which is not good. I probably need to get one of those light things, but anyway. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please do go and subscribe and check out my other videos. And inshallah, I will see you guys very soon. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Bye.